No matter how much money you throw at your next PC case, you always have to make a decision between good thermal performance and good silent performance. Usually, case manufacturers find a way to make a happy medium in between, but occasionally you'll find a case that ascribes to one specialty or another. And if the six-sided snowflake is any indication, it should be obvious which camp the Silverstone Redline 06 falls into. It should be immediately apparent that this is no ordinary Redline 06. This, as you can obviously see, is a tempered glass version of the case. When the case first came out, it did not offer a tempered glass option. The mounting method should be familiar to you if you've seen an NZXT S340 Elite or a Fantex P400 tempered glass edition. It has the four pegs that stand out and the glass panel sits on those four pegs and then it has thumb screws that hold it in place. However, something that's a little bit different is instead of having rubber washers on the pegs and on the thumb screw, they're actually embedded in the glass panel. And of course, these are completely proprietary. And I actually like this method uh, a lot better than having the washers that can easily get lost or, or fall off. This is also by far the darkest tint I've seen on a glass panel for a PC case. It's very dark, so if you want to actually see the internals of your PC, they'll need to be illuminated in some way if you want to actually see them from the outside. It has a sleek and boxy design that's really popular right now. One major departure from the current design language, however, is the inclusion of the this full mesh panel on the front of the case. This is a staple that was popular in years past, and if you include some uh, LED fans in the front, it can actually look pretty good, and of course that's entirely subjective. And this version of the case does include three LED fans in the front and one exhaust fan in the back. This case comes in four versions. It comes in a base model, which has the acrylic window and one exhaust fan. And then it has a pro model, which is identical, but it has three LED fans in the front. Then they recently released the two tempered glass versions of those cases. And the look and feel is decent at that price point. The color on the two panels, the, the metal and the plastic match decently well. I'd say the color is pretty much perfect. The only difference is that the metal panels are more reflective. Now there are two color options available. One is this black and white or, or gray and white and the other is black with red accents. I will say I, I would imagine that this white version is much easier to hide fingerprints and the reflections aren't as noticeable on the white as they are on the black. But cracking open the case, we get a look at the cable management solution, and it's decently good here. It has a generous number of cable pass-throughs, a motherboard cutout for easy cooler installation, two cutouts above the motherboard, three alongside the motherboard, two below for a micro ATX configuration, and then two on the power supply shroud for a full ATX configuration, and then an additional cutout uh, on the power supply shroud for a PCIe uh, power cable to come up through. It also has a generous number of cable tie locations. There are no Velcro straps or some of the nicer uh, cable management features that you find on, for example, the S340. Now, of course, with four fans, you're going to need a way to power those. Many motherboards may not be able to support four system fans, so they include a 10 fan connector hub on the back of the motherboard tray that connects via Molex. You have your three uh, LED fans, your one exhaust fan, and then room for an additional six fans if you can find a place to put them. Now let's quickly talk compatibility. This is a, a decently flexible case that readily accepts many water cooling solutions. Now for cooling, in the front of the case we have room for three 120 millimeter fans or two 140 millimeter fans, a 200 millimeter or 240 millimeter radiator. In the back you have room for one 120 millimeter fan or one 120 millimeter radiator. And on top you have room for two 120 millimeter fans or two 140 millimeter fans. However, there is really not much space above the motherboard and below the top of the case. So if you are going to mount a radiator there, it needs to be less than 33 millimeters thick. The CPU cooler has to be less than 158 millimeters tall and the PSU can be up to 200 millimeters long. There are three included dust filters and they all attach to the case in different ways. In the front of the case, you have the really large dust filter and this covers the entire front of the case and that comes off via just some clips. You can just kind of pull it right off and it just comes off. Then on the top of the case, the dust filter is attached magnetically. So you can remove this if you're going to be using this 
as an exhaust. Obviously you don't need a dust filter for anything that's gonna be used as exhaust. And then on the bottom of the case, we have the cheapest feeling part of this entire case. Uh, it's a mesh dust filter that pops in via these clips. Then again, if you're gonna cut costs, it makes sense to do it somewhere where people aren't going to see it. Drive compatibility is another place where this case shines. Underneath the power supply shroud is a hard drive caddy that supports up to three 3.5 inch hard drives and then two 2.5 inch SSD trays. And I really like the mounting solution on these. It has just a single th thumb screw that you use to pop the trays on or off, but it makes moving those around super, super easy. So I've never seen this implementation uh, quite like this before, and I really like it. The front IO is also a little bit less traditional. It has a total of four USB ports in front. Two of them are USB 3, two of them are USB 2. It also has chrome-plated auxiliary uh, audio and 3.5 millimeter microphone jacks. And then of course a power button that is LED illuminated the same color as your fan. So in the white case, it's going to be white. In the black case, it's going to be red. However, interestingly enough, there is no reset button on this case. This is the first aftermarket case I've seen that has no reset button. But let's move on to thermals. Now I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here. Gamers Nexus did a very thorough review of thermals and I will link uh, their uh, video review in the description if you want to get the full details, but I'll kind of just summarize. I should also note that theirs was the non-tempered glass version of this case. They did their uh, testing before the tempered glass version came out. However, I can't imagine the tempered glass version really affecting the thermals very much at all. So, at the time of review, the Silverstone RL06 was the best thermal performance case they had tested recently. The CPU saw only a 47.8 degree increase over ambient, while the GPU saw only a 47.1 degree increase over ambient. They did note, however, that you can bring the fan speed down from uh, 1400 RPM to just 1000 RPM, and that increases the CPU temperature by just one degree while lowering the noise down to 37 decibels, which is much more tolerable. But of course, no case is perfect. First of all, the hard drive bay is not removable. You can remove the caddies, to acquire more space for cable management. However, the entire cage itself can't be removed and that gets in the way of cable management, but also comes into play in my second critique. And my second critique here is that the case supports a 240 millimeter radiator, but there's three fans in front. You can obviously imagine a scenario where someone would want to put a 360 millimeter radiator in front. And a lot of cases will add it an additional cutout on the power supply shroud to allow you to put in a radiator there, but they don't have that cutout on the power supply shroud and the hard drive tray underneath there is not removable. While the fan hub on the back of the motherboard tray was definitely a nice inclusion, I know a lot of people would have preferred this a PWM fan hub instead of just a Molex fan hub. By connecting this hub directly to the power supply, you don't have any control over the speed of those fans. They won't change dynamically as the system temperature changes. There's also minimal space behind the motherboard for cable management. While I praise the case for having so many tie downs, even just a thicker cable is going to have a hard time fitting between the motherboard tray and the rear panel when it gets closed. The PCIe brackets also have to be screwed in with just normal screws. Even on super, super budget-oriented cases, I always see thumb screws implemented here. Uh, it's not the end of the world, obviously, but I can't imagine thumb screws being that much more expensive than just traditional screws. My final note on this case is that the tempered glass version of this case is a $25 premium over the non-tempered glass version. But for me, that's like right on the edge. Now I'm gonna pretend like it would be a hard decision for me to make, but I know in the end, I absolutely would spend the extra $25 and get a tempered glass version because in my opinion, it looks that much cooler. It looks so neat. It's hard to critique something like that because they do offer both versions. But when you think about it, $75 for the feature set I just listed is a really good deal. By adding the tempered glass and adding the $25, it goes from being a really good deal to pretty much where it should be. I'd say it's, it's right in line with other tempered glass cases out there. Again, for the final time, I will mention the NZXT S340 Elite is $99 and it has pretty much all the same features that this case has. However, this one has the advantage of including some really good fans with that uh, sub $100 price tag. So it's really up to you. How important is tempered glass to you? For me, again, I'm gonna act like it's a hard decision, but I definitely would spend that extra money for the tempered glass version.
So it really just depends where your priorities are. And I think there's definitely a market of people that would find this case very attractive at less than $100. Well, thank you guys for checking out this video. If you appreciated it, then go ahead and give it a like. And also a special thanks to Silverstone for providing me with this review sample. And if you wanna know where to find it, check the video description below. It's, it was released just recently, the last couple of weeks. So not all on, online retailers have it yet. We are going to do a full build in this case in the next couple of weeks. So if you want to uh, know when that video comes, make sure you're subscribed so you know when that happens. And if you wanna check out other build videos or case reviews that we've done, those are available here. You can check those out if you want some, some more of my opinion on mainstream cases that have come out recently. Um, yeah, and also if you want to be included in any giveaways that we do, we do giveaways every month, always check the video description for those as well. And I will catch you guys in the next one.